opening 10 minutes, which is, hey Loki, thank you for coming in and, uh, what is it, glorifying this review of your presence. Come on, buddy. Move your big butt out of the way. Sup guys, Hicking here, bringing you a movie review on Marvel's latest release, uh, Black Widow. So yeah, 10 years. It took 10 bloody years for Natasha to get her own solo movie, but here it is. And I had the fortune of seeing this yesterday, and yeah, it was good. I mean, the concept is that it's mixed, you know, ranging from okay to good. It's not great. There are flaws. Obviously, every movie has flaws. But this one wasn't bad. I mean, like, let me put it this way. After seeing Fast 9 the week before, which really bored me, actually, this was a lot more entertaining. Typical Marvel? Yeah, it's got the typical Marvel formula. Some new stuff in there? Yeah, stuff you can definitely enjoy. But for the most part, I thought it was a decent entry in the MCU. So yeah, guys, before I get really into this, remember to like and subscribe, and yeah, let's do this then. So, Black Widow then. Uh, first off, a uh, thing you gotta know about it is it takes place between Civil War and Infinity War. This is basically a prequel to, yeah, to, 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 to Infinity War, essentially. <laughs> it's, it's, it's similar to Captain Marvel in a way, which kind of took place before the other movies. This one sort of is like an interlude, you know, gets the way or that you can kind of watch it in. Uh, for the most part, yeah, you could, you could just jump straight into this movie if you haven't seen Endgame. Uh, the only spoiler for Endgame you're going to get is in the end credit scene. So, yeah, you could just watch this film if you haven't seen Endgame yet and just walk out and not watch the uh, end credit scene and you'll be completely fine. But yeah, overall, the story. What do I think of the story? Is it worthwhile? Was it worth telling? Um, yeah, yes, yes and no. For the most part, the character stuff is great. Learning about Natasha and who she is and who her family is that she has. Wow, seriously, what is it with all these various movies or medias coming out with the character having this unknown relative or family that we never knew they had? I mean, uh, Nathan Drake did it, uh, Dom Toretto did it now recently, and now Natasha is doing it. I wonder how many more characters are going to come up and say, oh yeah, I had a secret sis. Oh wait, yeah, Thor Ragnarok did it actually, yeah, when we found out that, uh, you know, you know, they had a... Uh, you know, sister, like half sister. So yeah, that, that actually, that actually did happen first, huh? Yeah, huh? Well, yeah. Well, there you go. You know, it, 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 it's 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 a thing that happens. It's so stereotypical now, like like cliche. So many things are doing it, but yeah, it works. It works for the most part. You get a good idea why she never mentioned them before, and how this sort of ties into Infinity War with where we find her in. Um, story wise, it's it's pretty. It's a pretty dark sort of movie. The way this movie starts is very different and unique compared to most MCU films. I really like the opening, actually. Um, after that, yeah, it, it kind of goes into typical sort of Bond, Bond slash uh, Mission Impossible territory. You know, the characters on the run from the government, they're trying to hide out, and then something from their past comes in to haunt them and then pulls them back into that life, and then they have to sort out and, you know, uh, fix the regrets of their past, etc., etc., and, you know, you've got Natasha reuniting with all the various members of her step-family, ranging from her sister, Yalina, to her stepfather, Alexia, aka the Red Guardian, to her stepmother, Malina, and, uh, yeah, so on and so forth, until they eventually come together to defeat the main villain of the film. Yeah, very typical story, but it's told well enough. And we do get a lot of ties in and backstory to stuff that was set up uh, by Natasha, for Natasha in the previous Avengers movie. So, you know, Budapest, Dracov, and his daughter, uh, the Burning Orphanage? No, we didn't, we didn't get that one, unfortunately. No, that one is missing. And, of course, the whole thing with Age of Ultron, the whole controversy with the fertility stuff that they did, the Red Room and that. So, yeah, we get, we get, we get a bit of a backstory there. We get more of an extended element to that there. So, yeah, that's done. That's done pretty well. Character-wise, yeah, this is Natasha's movie. She is the main character, of course. It's Black Widow. It's her film. But this is also uh, Yalina's movie, you know, who's played by Florence Pig? Am I saying that right? Please forgive me for that. Uh, Scarlett Johansson does a very good job. You know, if you didn't feel like she had any action in uh, Endgame, which honestly she didn't, 
this movie makes her shine in that department. And at the same time, you know, it's given over sort of the secondary main character role to Yalina because she's going to be taking on the mantle of the Black Widow. As you guys know, Phase 4's entire theme so far has basically been a passing of the torch. You know, Sam is the new Captain America. Uh, there's going to be a new sort of Miss Marvel coming out. Uh, Hawkeye is going to be passing on the mantle to Kate Bishop. You know, we got the setup for the Young Avengers. We got the setup for Thunderbolts, etc., etc. So there's all these little pieces coming together, working together to set all of these different elements up. And that's kind of what this movie's goal basically is. You know, it's it's telling us this story of Natasha that we never got to know before properly, while giving us the story of Elena and setting her up as the new Black Widow going forward. And, of course, setting up other elements, including uh, Alexia, you know, played by David Harbour from Stranger Things, who plays the Red Guardian, which is basically, he's basically the uh, Russian Captain America. And I'm assuming this is sort of, this is going to basically be a setup for the uh, Russian Avengers. Uh, what, what are the, what is the name? What is the name in the comics? I don't remember this. I don't really remember. I think there's a, I think they have a bear in their team. I, I could be wrong, like a guy that turns into a bear. I could be very wrong about that. Correct me if I'm wrong. But that's pretty cool. It's pretty cool how they go about doing this. So yeah, it's a very unique movie. It's Black Widow. It stars Black Widow. It stars a new Black Widow. And they're fighting. They're taking on Black Widow. So yeah, a lot of uh, thematic symbolism going on here with this movie. And character-wise, yeah, the Scarlett Johansson is Natasha. Florence as Yalina, Rachel Weisz from the Mommy movies as uh, Marlena, and David Harbour as Alexi, aka Red Guardian. They're great. Their chemistry together as this weird sort of dysfunctional family is great. When they're all on screen together, you believe that these guys, you know, loved each other. And obviously, there's a bit of pain and sorrow there as well, because, you know, a lot of it, you know, for them wasn't, at least for the kids particularly, and particularly for Alina, because she's the younger member of the family here for her you know like it, you know it wasn't it wasn't real because these guys were essentially spies and they're kidnapping children and they're making them do all this crazy stuff but yeah there's, there's a lot of dark elements to it but for the most part these guys these actors and actresses these characters are what keep this movie worth watching you know it keeps it up there you know they're interesting enough that you're like cool i want to see more of these characters which then brings me to the villains of the movie the villains holy crap so we got ray winston uh or ray ray, ray winstone is it playing a general Drakov. if that name sounds familiar you might have heard it before in the mcu I'm not gonna say where it, it has been brought up before so this is sort of a nice setup from previous movies setting this element up but yeah here's your typical russian general asshole basically this guy is kidnapping children and he's turning them into black widows into weapons and he's controlling them he's a very abusive narcissistic bullying kind of guy and really his role is really small i mean for a main villain he doesn't really come into this movie until like the third act he's sort of basically in the shadows the whole time i guess he does a decent job i mean if they wanted to create a villain that we hate then yeah they did a good job with him and he does a good performance as well because you really do hate this guy even if you don't really learn a lot about it but yeah he's, a, he's an asshole you want it you want to see him dead he's not a villain that you're like oh i can sympathize with this villain i like him i you know i hope it works out or i you know etc etc he's not a fun villain like thanos or, or the joker it's like oh this dude's nuts this dude's crazy but he's so fun and engaging to watch now this dude's just your typical stereotypical russian bad guy that you're like i hope he gets he gets a bullet in the head because he's you know i hate him i hate him simple as that that's that's all it amounts to and then, of course, we got our main physical threat, who's basically the henchman of the film. Uh, you know, they've advertised him as the main villain of the movie, aka Taskmaster. But Taskmaster is not the main villain of the movie. He's basically, essentially, the Winter Soldier of this film. The only difference is, is that in Winter Soldier, you know, Alexandra Price, played by Robert Redford, was charismatic. You know, you kind of, you didn't know if he was a good guy or a bad guy, what his goals were. When you did find it, like, damn. But, you know, he had, so, he had, he had certain views to him that you may kind of may may or not have agreed with but like like i said charismatic and presence and winter soldier was just threatening he was basically the terminator and he was just killing people left and right trying to accomplish his mission taskmaster is sort of similar to that in regards he basically does feel like a terminator like villain but you never get to see any of the carnage that he unleashes i guess there's that one point in the movie where he's chasing Yalina and Natasha in the streets and he's just like wiping the floor of anyone coming across him but you, you you don't feel the impact of those innocent deaths like you do in Wonder Soldier I mean you remember that one scene where he's just where he just uh, shoots all those people in the Quinjet or kicks one dude into a turbine you don't get that here so yeah uh 
I don't feel that threatening presence, if that makes sense. Taskmaster looks cool, but yeah, the presence-wise, not so much. Again, henchman. That's what he is. That's what he's about. He's essentially a robot, which is disappointing for a lot of fans, especially for me, because Taskmaster in the comics, aka Tony Masters, is supposed to be one of the best fighters in the MCU. He's, he's supposed to be able to photogenically remember all the different fighting styles of different characters and be able to kick ass, but no. Taskmaster in this movie is not Tony Masters, and the the whole concept of being able to remember the different movesets and memorize them and mimic them is technology-based, unfortunately. So already this is not, technically speaking, Taskmaster, and they do sort of pull this twist with the character which might remind people of the Mandarin from Iron Man 3, which wasn't a very good twist in my opinion. But it fits the theme and the story of this film more, so it kind of works here. Uh, that said, my biggest disappointment with Tosmo is the simple fact that I wish we'd gotten more action scenes with the character. You know, if you've seen the trailers and the TV spots, they pretty much hands down show you every sort of moveset that the character pulls up. And that's about it. Honestly, the best moment the best sequence of taskmaster is, is is the introduction is the first fight sequence with him and natasha early on in the movie on this on this bridge that takes place and that's it that's the only time you get this good idea of this character the rest of it is just sort of him just looking menacingly uh chasing them in a car or having this very short quick fight sequence with him versus red guardian that's very over and very quickly done with and then you get sort of like this final fight that you think is going to go on very long but it doesn't what could have basically been a new version of the Winter Soldier or something to the equivalent of like say a nemesis from the Resident Evil games is just very superficial and very low bar if that makes sense. You know, you expect big, big things from him that aren't unfortunately. So yeah, very disappointing in that regards. But again, character looks cool and story decision that they go with the character in this movie, it works for the most part. So yeah, villains could have definitely been better, which also brings me to the Black Widows. Again, it's it's Black Widow, Black Widow versus Black Widows. And yeah, there's not a lot of that, unfortunately. You know what I mean? They set it up very early on. You get you get like uh, one or two scenes with the Black Widows chasing uh, Natasha and Yanina throughout the movie. And then you sort of get towards the end, you get this little cool fight sequence where Natasha is taking them all on. But like I said... It's very quick, and that's one of the biggest problems with this movie, is that while the action is cool and it's good, it's way too quick. The action starts, you get pumped, you get excited, and then it's... Over. It's done. And then you're on to the next action sequence, and then you're like, yeah, it's getting good, it's getting pumped, we're gonna get something extreme, and... It's over. <laughs> that's that's kind of how it goes like it's it's sort of the opposite of say something like a what can i compare this to say say the matrix reloaded you know there's one scene that everyone complained about it was the neo versus uh agent smith scene where he's taking him on in the courtyard and it's like it goes on for like like a good five six minutes and a lot of people will tell you there's a good point where this fight could have ended and it would have been perfect instead of it dragging on and dragging on and going into the cgi territory and that's kind of what, and this is kind of the opposite of that it gets good it gets going and then it stops and it's like is that it like, is that, seriously, is that it? Like, give me more. I want to see more. Like, and there isn't, unfortunately, which is such a shame because uh, some of the sequences are cool. They're really cool. You got the bridge fight, like I said, with Natasha and Taskmaster, which is really cool because you get a good idea of how Taskmaster fights and some cool visual shots and movesets in there. And then you got the chase sequences with Natasha and Yalina. One of the best fight scenes is actually between Natasha and Yalina early on in the movie where they're just sort of taking each other on and trying to figure themselves out. That was pretty cool. A lot of brutal hand to hand fight scenes, which reminds me of Winter Soldier. Like, I mean, when you think about it, the closest Marvel movie you could compare this to is The Winter Soldier, because that's the only one that kind of comes close in terms of just being this one on one hand to hand fight kind of sequences that you get. Uh, may, I, may, I guess maybe Daredevil as well, if you want to consider that part of it. But uh, yeah, um, this is a very, it's very sort of realistic espionage spy political thriller like it's similar in those veins in that vein to that movie in particular so yeah if you like Winter Soldier I guess you will like this a lot but in my opinion Winter Soldier was definitely definitely better it did a lot of certain twists and angles a lot better which is actually an interesting thing to point out the twists of this movie there were a lot of theories going to this film and all of them turned out to be wrong which is shocking I mean you go into this movie expecting like certain characters to die 
and they don't. And it's like, oh, 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 that's surprising. I thought that character was going to die. They don't. You go into it thinking this character is going to betray them. They're obviously a bad guy. That doesn't happen. It's like, oh, okay. This character is obviously going to be the main villain behind the mask. No, it's not. And it's like, wow, they really didn't go into what a lot of people, including myself, would have considered to be such an obvious route to go into. But they don't do that. And it's like, well done. Well done, Marvel, for actually subverting my expectations in a good way. Uh, but at the same time, it's like, hmm, I kind of feel like they, it, those, those early fake spoilers were kind. They sounded kind of better. But no, I'm not complaining. Overall, the movie's oral pacing and structure and plot and the way it's told and the way it's done is good. I just think some of the acting scenes could have been longer and we could have got a bit more development when it came to the villains. Uh, and that really, that's the biggest, that's the movie's biggest flaw. In terms of like a uh, soundtrack, it's great. I like the Russian core like soundtrack that they play with this movie. It's, it's awesome. You know, it's got, it's got oomph to it. And yeah, while the second half of the movie does feel very typical Marvel formula, it's still engaging for the most part. Uh, in terms of where the final act takes place, it was very surprising how they went about and did it. Uh, I've always wanted to see sort of like an action sequence like that that takes place in like in the air and you've got just crazy stuff happening. And it's cool. I, I like that. I enjoyed that. I just wish it went on for a, a little bit longer because it could have added more to it. Instead, as it gets going, as it gets excited, it's over and done with. And then you're like, oh, is that it? Huh. Disappointing. And yeah, this movie's just, it ranges from being okay to good to okay. And it's in that kind of middle ground. Which then brings me to the ending of the movie. The ending. There's something weird with the way this ending was done. Uh, you've got the movie, right? Everything's concluded. Everything's wrapped up. And it ends. And then it's like, okay, this is where the movie's obviously going to end. This is where the credits are going to play. And then it doesn't. It then cuts to another ending. And you're like, wait a second. How did the film go from here to here? Like, obviously there's a scene that must have taken place in between, but it's so weird how it's edited and cut. And in the end, you're just like, there's a scene missing. How did she get from here to here? Like, wait a minute, what? What? So I'm wondering if that was very much intentional and this is something that's going to be revealed as a twist in a later movie or series, perhaps? Or if this is just a big, massive mistake because it's such an obvious thing they do at the very end and it's like... Why is it structured or paced like that? It's weird. But yeah, other than that complaint and the villains... Oh, and the addition of the character of Rick Mason, who's basically uh, Natasha's supplier, who's who's got like three scenes in the movie and you think he's going to have a bigger role, but he doesn't and he's just sort of there. He's a character you could have cut completely from the movie and it wouldn't have changed anything. So yeah, that's that's another disappointment because it, it sounds like uh, the guy is a very decent actor and they just sort of waste him. So yeah, uh, which, which, you know, he's not the only one. There's another, there's another actor or should I say actress in this film that is that is pretty cool but they waste him in this movie and it's like why did you do that why why so yeah the uh, villain wise and uh, Rick Mason wise and short action scenes wise those are my biggest complaints in this film other than that I think it's cool I think it's fine uh like I said Natasha's story is cool Yarnino is a cool character Alexia is funny oh funny comedy humor typical Marvel humor some people might hate it, some people might like it, but overall, I thought the humor worked, uh, especially for Red Guardian, because he's basically that sort of father figure that likes to uh, joke about while trying to be very emotional with you, and for the most part, the jokes hit, but there are some that do sort of miss, and the jokes sort of do, you know, it, it goes a bit like, uh, okay, is it over yet? No, it still goes like, oh, okay, okay. Wait till we get to the emotion stuff. When the movie is emotional, it's emotional. When it's funny, it's funny. And yeah, I don't, I don't get that whole like, oh, uh, the humor ruins the emotion of the movie. I feel like they did a decent. They managed to balance it well enough. Uh, it's just, uh, it's just a case of man, they really could have done a better job with the action sequences. Like, uh, there's at least one point in the movie that I did find funny, but at the same time, it's like you could have just made that a good emotional action sequence, but they didn't. So, yeah. It, like I said, it's a very mixed bag. I did enjoy it. I do want to see this movie again, but yeah, it's a very mixed bag for me. Like, you could have done a better job. As for the end credit sequence, because people are going to ask, yep, the end credit sequence does tie into Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and it does set up uh, the, uh, I believe, the Hawkeye show that's coming out, along with potentially maybe Thunderbolts or Dark Avengers. We still have no confirmation of those movies or, or even show is being made, 
but that's what it feels like it's going to. That's the direction it's going into. So I'm very curious what's going to happen after that. But overall, I enjoyed Black Widow. I enjoyed uh, what is essentially Natasha's final movie. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to a sequel starring uh, Yalina, definitely. And hopefully they'll bring uh, Red Guardian and Molina back as well, maybe. Uh, maybe not. I really do I really do want to see the Russian Avengers. So maybe we can get some sort of prequel movie or animation or TV show uh, about them. But yeah, guys, I hope you liked my review on this. Remember, guys, as always, to like and subscribe. And I shall see you when I shall see you. Take care and bye.